This here is the EVJ RTX 3080 XC3, and it's actually the cheapest variant that EVJ offers in the 3080 lineup. It also packs a heck of a punch, as I'm sure you might imagine, and takes an interesting approach when it comes to cooling and performance, which we'll talk about in this video. Oh, and stick around because at the end, we'll be giving it away courtesy of Newegg. I know I said we wouldn't be doing many of these reviews, especially since none of you really can buy these cards, at least on demand, but uh, this is an exception, mainly for the giveaway. We're still gonna review it. Stay with me. If you're looking for a sleek and efficient AIO for your next PC, check out Be Quiet's Pure Loop AIO lineup. Choose between four popular sizes that all sport Pure Wings 2 fans and enjoy qualities like dedicated fill ports and decoupled pumps for minimal vibration and maximum aesthetic at the block. Learn more about Be Quiet Pure Loop AIOs below. So when Newick reached out about an opportunity to both review this card and give it away to someone globally, I really couldn't pass it up. And look, I know I've been extremely critical of both AMD and Nvidia as of late, you know, pledging outright to ignore AIB reviews until stock replenishes. It doesn't make sense to review something that no one can buy. Uh, but the chance to give one of these away in such a time is something that I, I really can't say no to. I would never say no to that. And the fact that these are so rare makes it even better. Uh, I'd also like to say before we begin that Newegg had no say as to what went into this review. In fact, they, they won't even see the script or the video, the editing, the raw video before it's published, any of that prior to publishing. So to start off, uh, pretty sexy card. Apart from the subtle red accents here and there, I feel like it does the job well. I mean, this design, oddly enough, reminds me in a lot of ways of AMD's reference RX 6800 XT. Yeah, you can see they look kind of similar. I mean, that's a stretch, but you, you, you see where I'm coming from, right? You'll find a standard port selection at the rear, three DisplayPort 1.4A ports, and a single HDMI 2.1 port, a no-nonsense configuration. And lastly, there's a bit of RGB on this card, two illuminated EVGA logos, one on the top and one on the side. But if you decide to turn these off, the card won't look silly. Some cards look silly with their RGB turned off, and uh, I can appreciate this approach from EVGA. Now, in terms of cooling, uh, this, is, this is where things get a bit interesting. So so the XC3 boasts three fans, right, which will stop turning when the GPU drops below 55 degrees Celsius. These do an okay job keeping things cool, though EVJ has oddly enough chosen higher core temps over a bit more noise. So this is actually the hottest AIB we've tested in this configuration, hotter even than the FE model, which is super rare for an AIB but it's also the quietest by a long shot. We measured 40.1 dBA in our typical sound test with Ida64 Engineer, while the Gigabyte Gaming OC model, which was also super quiet, managed roughly two decibels higher. That's a noticeable difference to the human ear, by the way. The XC3 also has a distinctly lower pitch from its fans while under load if we match the fan curves, helping to mask the sound profile overall. I should stress at this point that 78 degrees Celsius or anything around 80 C, I mean, that, that really shouldn't affect much at all in the way of, of the card's lifespan. So if that's what you're worried about, I, I wouldn't take these as dangerous temps by any means. Uh, and some might prefer the quieter operation over stellar temps. However, if you notice things creeping into, say, the upper 80s under a sustained load, uh, maybe consider replacing the stock thermal compound. It's not something you should expect to do, especially with an AIB that costs this much, but it will usually do the trick. Now, before I show you the gaming performance, I want to highlight two important things. Firstly, the latest NVIDIA driver, that's driver 4. 57.3 uh, at time of filming actually eats into a bit of performance. I noticed this when our XC3 model was actually scoring below the Founders Edition in synthetics, so we had to rerun literally every test you're about to see for all of our NVIDIA graphics cards in these charts. This update seems to affect Ampere more than any other generation, which I suppose is a good thing, but uh, you'll notice a bit of variation even in our power draw and temperature test if you were to compare them to, say, our day one coverages for the 3080 launch. Second, bear in mind that this EVGA model is priced aggressively at around 700 30 bucks. Now, I know that doesn't mean much to us in the States waiting for stock to replenish in late 2020. I mean, at this point, people are trying to flip these for 1500 bucks on eBay. Uh, but when these do become available at MSRP or somewhere near that, you may find yourself choosing between this model and the FE model, which is in the closet. I totally should have had that ready. I'll show you some B-roll. The Gigabyte Gaming OC variant, by the way, comes in at around 750 bucks, but many of you may find that its performance warrants this price tag. Uh, case in point are 3D Mark scores, right? In TimeSpy, the XC3 barely beats out 
the FE model, scoring 15,497 versus 15,422, and the Gigabyte model blows both of these out of the water thanks to aggressive core clocks out of the box. This extends into Superposition, which is another synthetic run in the 4K optimized preset. The Gigabyte model is clearly the better variant of the two on a performance level, boosting clocks significantly higher and sustaining said clocks thanks to additional thermal headroom and a more aggressive fan curve. And the gaming scene. Oh, it's kind of a similar story. I mean, I know you've seen already, what, a couple, at least from our channel, 3080 reviews. These aren't going to be anything crazy, right? You're not going to see this card perform way better or way worse than any other 3080 on the market, save maybe a reference blower style 3080. Uh, but we've added two additional titles since our original 3080 FE review, and uh, in almost every scenario, the XC3 trades blows. Some would say this is a massive fail for EBJ, right? And, and with respect, at least to the FE model, since the whole point of AIBs is to kind of outdo what the manufacturer produces themselves. But NVIDIA has actually done a pretty good job with its Founders Edition this time around, and they, they did the same arguably with the last uh, generation of FE cards. The board is technically custom, and that means it's technically AIB, since it deviates massively from what we'd call reference. Uh, so the bar was already fairly high, and EBJ has essentially offered a direct alternative in this XC3 variant, which again, is the cheapest 3080 model they offer on their website at only $30 above the FE model. But I can imagine others arguing that the whole point of spending this much on a graphics card is to extract as much performance as possible, as reasonably possible, anyway, out of the card. And I don't like to overclock in these review videos because every card is a bit different. There is such a thing as a silicon lottery in the case of GPUs as well. I test the, the way things arrive out of the box because that's what a vast majority of you end up doing, it, plug and play, right? But I think EVJ may have sacrificed a bit too much on the temperature side of things for the sake of remaining quiet. And again, this is more or less subjective, but I feel like they should have raised the stock fan curve a bit and allowed sustained clocks to boost a bit higher because that's what's happening here, right? The software is essentially pulling back on frequency uh, at these higher temperatures. It's essentially thermal throttling, but all of these cards thermal throttle to an extent. It's basically the software kind of optimizing core clocks and memory clocks around the thermal headroom available. Now I should point out, this is super easy to override in say MSI Afterburner, right? I had this card matching or even beating the gaming OC variant from Gigabyte at the same noise level. So this was certainly attainable for EVGA, but they chose to, to play it safe? I don't know if safe is even the right word. Uh, or maybe they did it to differentiate between this SKU and maybe like some of the higher price SKUs that they offer. They have some, some $800 versions uh, that I'm sure are catching some of your eyes as well. Um, so this card's kind of like a, a 3600 uh, Ryzen 5 CP from AMD. I guess that's, I don't know why I'm thinking in terms of CPUs here, but this is the only thing that really kind of helps me explain where I think this card is positioned in the graphics card market. Think of it like a Ryzen 5 3600. So sure, a 3600 is not going to perform as well out of the box as say a 3600X or an XT, but with a bit of love, it'll probably hit or surpass those stock frequencies. Uh, so I think this was 100% intentional, more or less, and it isn't really a huge deal, uh, but it may shock a few buyers who were expecting these prototypical AIBs to kind of destroy whatever NVIDIA was selling directly. If you're willing to take a few minutes to tweak some things, this card is one of the best buys out there. But if you're just plug and play, expecting this thing to destroy everything in its path, um, yeah, you might want to spend a bit more money. So I hope this has cleared some things up at least. This is certainly a card worth considering. Look, I think it's well built, it's priced competitively, but it will run a bit toasty out of the box. And I saw this reflected actually in a few tweets as well when we brought up the giveaway to our followers there. So um, it's it's not just a you know this particular samples issue. I think this is just how EVGA wanted this particular SKU to perform. Maybe run a bit hotter, of course those frequencies are gonna throttle back a tad bit more because there's less thermal headroom available, uh, and then if you want to extract a bit more performance, you're gonna have to overclock, which is normal for any graphics card out there, but out-of-box frequencies are not going to be as optimal as I'd like them to be, frankly, for the price. It's not to say this is a bad card, again, I'm sure, <laughs> Most of you would be happy to win this thing. That's why I'm still perfectly fine giving it away. It's just, I think, not the best. It's kind of tricky. It's just kind of a weird card. If you're willing to do a bit of tweaking, it can be one of the best for the, for the money. But out of the box, it's not. Yeah. But I'm sure you still want it, right? So this giveaway was entirely Newegg's idea, and I'm grateful again that they gave us the opportunity to share it with all of you. If you happen to win, you'll receive this exact card.
That's right, the one I'm holding right here. Uh, and you can enter if you live in any of the countries to which Newegg ships, which is a ton of countries. You can find them linked below. Pretty much any of, yeah, any of these here. Additional details are in the video description under our sponsor link, pretty typical giveaway terms and conditions. Be sure to check that out along with links to all the graphics cards tested in this video. I know you're probably not gonna be able to buy most of these at MSRP right now, but maybe a few months from now, that would be, that would be pretty nice. If you enjoyed this one, feel free to give it a like. I would appreciate that. Consider subscribing subscribing and stay tuned for our next video. My name is Greg. Good luck in the giveaway and thanks for learning with me.